Hey guys, it's Bash. Today we're going to go through the very first Legend of Zelda made in 1986 to see if there are any original enemies still around or if they've been phased out over the years. There are 20 main games in total stretching out over 36 years. That's a lot of time to change direction. And as you know, over the years things have changed. Going from 2D to other worlds to 3D and different races in Hyrule to adventuring the seas to shrinking down to a whole different realm to a completely new way to play the games we know and love. Within the 36 years they've been making these games, they've made sure to handcraft each enemy new or reused to the games that they are in. With this video, I wanted to start to take the original enemies and lay them out to see where they've ended up over the years. Our first enemy should be pretty familiar to you if you played either Breath of the Wild or Tears of the Kingdom. It's the Lionel. Now, Lionels have been historically difficult. In the original Legend of Zelda, these bad boys would strike fear into your heart. With the Red Lionel having four hearts and the Blue Lionel having six, they were basically little mini bosses on the map. If the Red Lionel touched you with their sword, it was one heart. If the Blue Lionel touched you, it was two. And if either of them hit you with a sword throw, it was two hearts. They've only got more aggressive over the years, making an appearance in A Link to the Past, Oracle of Ages and Seasons, A Link Between Worlds, Breath of the Wild, and Tears of the Kingdom. I have the most personal experience with them from A Link to the Past on top of Death Mountain. Apparently, there are only three Lionels in the whole game, and all three of them have a very personal grievance with. Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom made Lionels a pretty difficult battle for the average player but making them have lucrative rewards at the end, so making it worth the fight. Overall, they stuck to the original plot, making them difficult to beat, but in total, they only appear in seven out of the 20 games. So relevance, I would say they stuck around. For longevity, I can't say they have. This next enemy really isn't gonna sound familiar, but I assure you they are. These guys are called Armos. They've been in a whopping 17 out of 20 games in the franchise. Most of the time they look like soldiers or totems of sorts, and the Legend of Zelda manual it states they were human soldiers that have been turned to stone. In the original, they were found in the overworld completely dormant until you got close and touched one. Then they would flash and move around seemingly at random. This is how most of them are found in the later games as well. Most of you will remember them from A Link to the Past, Ocarina of Time, and Majora's Mask. Along with those, they were in Link's Awakening, Oracle of Seasons and Ages, Four Swords, The Wind Waker, Four Swords Adventures, The Minish Cap, Twilight Princess, Phantom Hourglass, Spirit Tracks, Skyward Sword, Link Between Worlds, and Triforce Heroes. My personal favorite Armos to fight is the one from Skyward Sword. I like the fact that you have to use the Gust Bellows to blow the turbine on the top of the enemy's head to make it open, allowing for an attack. But I love the style from Twilight Princess. I think it fits the vibe that they have going on in that game very well. I think we all can agree that even though these guys have changed over the years, they're still very alive in the franchise. Maybe even present in a new Zelda game in the future. The next enemy really isn't in the limelight, only being in seven games, but was rather popular in the older games. Its name's Gory. In most of the games, it resembles a canine, but is called a little devil in the manual of The Legend of Zelda and Adventure of Link. In the original Zelda, a group of Gorias are said as what we would now call a mini-boss. After defeating them in level 1, or the first dungeon of the game, you will find a boomerang. Ironically, they roam around the dungeons and groups attacking with boomerangs. They appear in A Link to the Past, Link's Awakening, Oracle of Season and Ages, and A Link Between Worlds, along with the first two mentioned earlier. I didn't realize it until this video, but these guys are one of the most annoying enemies I ever faced in A Link to the Past as a kid. Next to these mustache guys in the desert. As for the Goria, I don't think past the Oracle games, they have been in an original game. I know that A Link Between Worlds is a standalone game, but it's basically just a revamp of A Link to the Past. But with that aside, I don't think as of now they have really stuck around too much. This next enemy isn't what you would expect. You would say, come on Bash, that's just a snake. And I would have to tell you, you're wrong. This guy's name is actually Rope. Yes, seriously. Rope have changed very little over the span of the 11 games that they're in. Just like the original, they kind of mosey around until they see you, then charge. There are two variations of rope throughout the games that they're in. One being called Skull Ropes in A Link to the Past, A Link Between Worlds, and Triforce Heroes, and Golden Ropes in Minish Cap. Rope appear in A Link to the Past, Link's Awakening, Oracle of Seasons and Ages, Four Swords, Four Swords Adventures, The Minish Cap, Phantom Hourglass, A Link Between Worlds, and Triforce Heroes along with the original. In my opinion, I have a love-hate relationship with them. They're quite cute, but they're also very annoying, especially in the dark. I think these guys have stuck around in a decent amount of games and are quite memorable from the games I've played at least. This last enemy is going to confuse a lot of the newer players. You remember this guy, and this guy, well let me introduce you to this guy. This Sora was an absolute nightmare, with one being in every frame with water in the overworld in the original Zelda. They would casually spit at you taking half a heart with every hit, and if you did manage to hit one, they can take damage, go into water, and regenerate health. They were extremely annoying to deal with, but once you got the magical shield, you could deflect the spit making it slightly better. This type of Zora would only appear in Adventure of Link, A Link to the Past, Link's Awakening, Oracle of Seasons and Ages, Four Swords, A Link Between Worlds, along with the original, before they made them into the friendly species we know today. Along with that information, I don't know if you would say Zora's lasted through the series is kind of a trick question. As a whole, they're definitely still around, but they're not enemies to Link anymore. 
I hope you guys like the start of this little series. There's only 5 out of the 36 total enemies in the original game. Let me know in the comments what your favorite game from the series is and the toughest enemy of that game. If you want to see another video like this in the future, don't forget to leave a like and share this with a friend that likes the Zelda franchise as much as you do. With that, make sure to charge your controllers, drink some water, and I'll see you next time, guys.